Hi everyone, this is Brian with Anderson Pens, and today we're going to take a look at a solid gold Waterman lever filler. Let's take a look. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a Waterman overlay. And before we get into the details of this pen, I want to tell you the story of how I acquired this pen and um, uh, what it took to actually get this into my collection. My first Washington DC pen show a number of years ago, I went with the sole uh, goal of acquiring Waterman overlays. And at the end of the show, I was fairly successful in that regard. I had a number of items on the list. I wanted a fine silver overlay, I wanted filigree, I wanted uh, a Sheraton. I was trying to get one of a number of different patterns. and. The last day of the show, I pretty much had spent my budget, but I still have time, so I'm, I'm looking around, and I happened to see this pen on a gentleman's table. And I looked at it, we talked about it, I fell in love with it, but the budget just wasn't there. So I grabbed his card, and as soon as I got home from the show, uh, back to Wisconsin, it was payday, I emailed him up, said, do you still have this pen? And he said, yes, I do. Uh, it's still X amount. And we made the transaction. I got the pen. So um, sometimes it doesn't always happen. Sometimes by the time you get back to him, uh, the pen is gone. And, you know, it's the pen that got away. In this case, it almost got away and I was able to actually get it. So what are we looking at here? Uh, it's a Waterman overlay. And by first glance, it doesn't look like anything too special, but it is a solid nine carat gold, what they call line and dot overlay. Uh, it's English made. This is basically, this is a Waterman 52 and a half body. If you're not familiar with the Waterman number system, five indicates it is a lever filler. Two indicates it has a number two size nib and half indicates it's a slender, uh, slender barrel. So it's full length like a 52, but it's a little bit slender. And oftentimes I found that the 52 and a halfs make really great candidates for overlays because the overlay added on gives it a little more girth and it gives it just the right amount of heft. So no surprise, I have a lot of 52 and a half uh, overlays for 52 and a half. Uh, this actually technically could be considered a 552 and a half, the first five being for solid gold, but they weren't marked that way. Uh, in fact, on this pen, the, the butt end, any kind of number that would have normally been here has been worn off. So we have line and dot, and basically you can see the dots that line up, and then there are a little of these little squiggles, and then we've got the lines here. So it's really a, a very interesting pattern. It's unusual uh, with English only type of pattern. And then here, Next to the lever, we have uh, the series of, of hallmarks, and if you're familiar with English hallmarks, they're fairly extensive. Uh, this one actually dates to 1922, so we can, we can successfully date that. We have the nine carat hallmark, uh, 375 there, and then we also have it here on the cap as well. So solid nine carat gold. Now, what's interesting about this, if you're a real astute, you'll notice that this lever is actually gold plated over steel. Well, that looks awkward, and for a while I thought that Perhaps that was a replacement lever, but that's actually how a lot of them did come with a steel, a plated steel lever. So that is technically correct. Um, we've got an area here for an engraving, which has been left blank. We've got the domed top. You can see how it's domed there instead of just sort of flat like they were a little bit later. Um, ebonite barrel. Let's take a look and open it up. And there's the nib, uh, Waterman number two. It's an ideal nib. Now, technically, probably it may have had a, a New York nib, but this is a real suitable placement. Take a look at this nib. Look how low these shoulders are, how long these tines are. This pen, if you can see, really has some flexibility to it. Um, it's not super flexible. Uh, compared to other Watermans that we've seen, but it is it's a really, really nice uh, amount of flex to it. Beautiful taper to this section here. Look how elegant that is. Uh, threads there. And we can post this pen. 
And it's a clipless version too, which is kind of nice, so that way you can, you can put this on however you want to put it on. You can line it up nice. You don't have to worry about lining the clip up. But posted, really comfortable, is a nice, nice weight. If you don't post, it still comes way back here, so depending on how far you grab it. Um, I like, do like to post my pens, so I will line up. Of course, I'll line up the dots. But a real nice weight. Um, it's just really a beautiful pen. Um, this, this pattern, you can sit and you can stare at it and find something new every time. You've got lines, you've got the squiggles, that's a technical term. Uh, the dots, you've got the hallmarks. Everything about this makes this really a great, great pen. Um, this 52 and a half slender size, um, it's just very elegant. I can picture, I can picture a banker or a businessman, he, maybe he received this as a gift or uh, he bought it after a, a big sale or a big event, but uh, 1922, this is 97 years old. And it's just really outstanding condition and it writes beautifully. Um, Lever fill, so it only fills from the bottle. And just pull it up like that and fill it up and it's, it's good to go. So really a fantastic pen. Unusual, a little more unusual pattern. And if you collect Waterman overlays uh, or you just, just like the way they look, this is uh, it, it's a very achievable pattern. Uh, sometimes in other materials, uh, not in solid gold, but uh, this one just happens to be, and I think it's a, it's a fantastic, fantastic pen. So there you have it, a solid gold Waterman lever filler, one of my favorite pens. Be sure to check us out online at andersonpens.com or our stores in Appleton in Chicago. Thanks for watching.